We're going to get started this morning with that dangerous heat wave many of you across the country are dealing with. With sweltering temp. Not even just across the country, but across the world, by the way. London is on fire, bro. London is quite literally, London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. It is falling down into the pit of fire. The Hoover Dam exploded, I guess. Uh, I don't know what the f that was about, but that's unrelated to the and other issues. London Bridge is this falling is down. The London Fire Brigade has declared a major incident in response to the surge in fires across the capital as temperatures exceed 40 centigrade. Now, for people who that don't understand, 40 degrees, you're living in Arizona, you're like, what the f*** do you mean 40 degrees? That's nothing, right? Except a lot of these goddamn houses are built in like the 17th century when temperatures were significantly cooler. They are not built for 40 degrees centigrade. Like, they are not built for this level of heat. And none of these fucking houses even have aircon, as I personally experienced when I was fucking out there. A transformer fire sparked a blast at the hydropower plant on Lake Mead. That was the explosion. Okay, got it. People legit cannot comprehend how fucking bad it is to be uh, in the UK when it's like 40 degrees Celsius. They don't understand what 40 degrees Celsius is. And they also don't understand uh, how bad it is when you live in a country that hasn't, doesn't have the proper insulation for that level of heat because their climate was never this hot and also doesn't have AC in general. Yeah, it's 32 uh, degrees centigrade. All our buildings retain this heat. It's only like 90 degrees, dude. I mean, this meme is 100% the truth though. This was fun too. Little fun, little sinkhole moment in New York. Look at that. They're doing that to liberals, brother. God is punishing the libtards. Do we think we can fix it by 2050? The G7 meeting a couple months ago, nothing has happened. We're all dead. The government don't give a fuck about us. They want everything for themselves. No, we won't be able to fix it because we can't even have fucking trams and more sustainable ways of public transport. Why? Because American car culture is so deeply embedded. It's a, the, the capitalist car manufacturers and the oil and gas industry have destroyed the American consciousness permanently, okay? People think that cars are individuality, so you can't tackle it on that front. Our reliance on fossil fuels is also a part of a, a permanent fixture of our minds. You can't change that. You can't tackle that either. There's nothing we can do about this. I'm sorry to report this, but the only way to fucking tackle climate change is not going to be through capitalism. The only way to tackle climate change, just like any other issue, is the obvious choice that we have ahead of ourselves, socialism or barbarism. And it is very obvious that we are heading towards fascism as a mechanism of control and barbarism as our inevitable demise. Every single day that I live on this planet, I, I realize that like that is our future, okay? You look at sinkholes opening up in the Bronx. You look at the fucking subway flooding. And then you think, will the Joe Biden administration be able to pass infrastructure change or, or a comprehensive infrastructure package? No. 33% of Americans have consistently believed that climate change is fake. It's not real. That's what we're living in. It's just wild that we are in a situation where like either the country is on fire or underwater for like a good amount of the year. This is the New York subway. Every time it rains here, waterfalls. Like, look at this shit. Look, 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 look. You think this is, do you think this is normal? Now, this isn't just that like, you know, extreme erratic weather conditions are, uh, are, are becoming the norm, but this is also a perfect representation of like, this is also a perfect representation of how ill-equipped we are in the wealthiest nation on earth, in one of the wealthiest fucking cities on the fucking planet that has more billionaires uh, than any other city on the planet. So ill-equipped to deal with it. Like, our infrastructure is dog shit. UPS driver collapsed from front. That alarming front. video of a UPS guy in distress from the extreme heat. He struggles to make it onto the front porch. Then he collapses, overwhelmed by the 110 degree temperature in Arizona. He has to lie down for a moment to recover. Slowly, he gets back up again and reaches for the doorbell before stumbling back to his truck. It's just a sickening feeling that you don't know what's going to happen to that guy if he goes to the next house or to his truck. Homeowner Brian Enriquez says he was shaken when he saw what his ring camera had captured. 
you can see in the video, he's looking at his hands, shaking his hands. I mean, he could have a mini stroke or anything. You may be surprised to hear that UPS trucks have Don't no have air, air conditioning. conditioning. It feels so freaking hot back here. Drivers are taking to social media to share their extreme working conditions. This guy is drenched in sweat. To get air through the truck, the best way is we always leave the doors open. UPS says the driver on that Arizona video Want to know AC? It's cost efficient. It's AC fine, costs fine, money. Imagine all those fucking cars have AC, dude. No. Video is fine today, adding, our package delivery vehicles make frequent stops, making air conditioning ineffective. Across the nation, the heat <laughs> air conditioning is not ineffective when you make frequent stops, brother. Why would you say that? Why would you just write that without any fucking counter? That's so fucking insane. Dude, God damn it. Every day, every day, every day that I watch the media, I am reminded once again of how fucking demon-like they are. It's because they open the door a lot, I think. Who cares, bro? What are you talking about? What, what the fuck do you mean? No. It's just expensive. That's it. It's just expensive. I work at UPS. The loading facilities are not air conditioned. We have to only got a few fans inside the building. It gets 10 degrees hotter than the outside. Yeah, I mean, remember, Amazon used to have a running ambulance. They had a contract with a private ambulance service to always have a running ambulance outside of their distribution facilities because it was literally cheaper to fucking uh, shuttle people to the hospital when they collapsed of heat exhaustion rather than actually pay for the AC. And also deal with the potential, uh, you know, lawsuits or whatever. Teamsters demand UPS protect drivers amid rec record heat. Rising temperatures are putting UPS Teamsters at risk. And more and more drivers succumb to brutal heat while delivering on their routes. After recent driver incidents and fatalities from heat illness, UPS made claims about the ineffectiveness of air conditioning in package trucks. While UPS cites no scientific evidence to prove that air conditioning would be ineffective. And we can point to OSHA guidelines that clearly recommend such cooling is in fact an effective means for employers to mitigate the risk of heat illness on the job. There are steps that UPS should be taking right now to protect drivers. Sorry, 6-3 Supreme Court decision decided that UPS drivers should be cooked when it's 110 degrees inside of the fucking UPS truck. So uh, also, 6-3 uh, decision from the Supreme Court declared that OSHA is actually an unconstitutional communist clusterfuck. So uh, no, no more uh, workplace safety requirements. Develop acclimation schedule for employees or literally just AC. I don't know why the Teamsters threat is just saying everything but AC. Here's a fucking union that's more powerful than the Teamsters Union. Actually, Teamsters Union is the most powerful in North America. That's not a, jo a joke. They are the strongest union. The police union. You think cops are fucking complaining about AC and their fucking cruisers? No. They're sitting in that fucking thing all goddamn day, looking at porn on their fucking laptop. And I stand by this. Delivery drivers and drivers in general, like truck drivers and delivery drivers, are infinitely more important than police. Society would not collapse tomorrow if cops ceased to exist. Sure, there would be problems because there would be awful people that try to take advantage of the instability. But society 100% would collapse without drivers. If you cut off a single part of the supply chain, if you cut off a single arm of logistics, it's done. No more medicine, no more supplies across the board. It would never happen. So just remember that. The USPS one is degrees. adding AC so you're to seeing a departure of about 33 degrees like it's time in for just the one day. In France, it's being called the heat apocalypse. One farmer in Spain was forced to flee, his clothes on fire. Terrifying signs of the times, and perhaps our future. Shell knew about climate change three decades ago and kept digging up that planet poison, helping us uh, to get to the point that thousands will die in climate change induced heat waves. Shell, have you tried not using a tumble dryer? No air con, no sweat. Here are our tips for keeping cool and saving energy when it's hot outside. Yeah, the individual responsibility to fucking mitigate climate change, anthropogenic climate change, is also a man made invention by the oil and gas industry. And a lot of you have eaten that propaganda up. Look at this Trump take. Most dangerous time for our country in history, far more dangerous than World War I or World War II, and that's because of the power of nuclear weapons. And yet you have people like John Kerry worrying about- Do you believe that individual change is completely useless? Individual change is completely useless if you don't factor in, like, plastic uh, uh, utensils and shit. Not using plastic utensils is not going to fucking move the needle in the same way that, like, uh, having a comprehensive- renewable energy agenda that changes our over-reliance on the fossil fuel industry away from sustainable to a way towards sustainable energy initiatives that will ultimately also 
um, create an entire new industry that's good for the economy as well. You know, like a, like a new deal, uh, but for uh, renewable energy, maybe like a green new deal. You know what I'm saying? This is the future. This is the only way out. And even then, I don't even know if it's going to be enough. I don't even know if we have oh, enough yes. time to solve it. So what will end up happening is doomerism. What will end up happening is more fascist governments as migration inevitably happens as a consequence of climate change, destroying agriculture as we've seen already. Part of the Syrian civil war was kickstarted as a consequence of climate change. Crops are going to get eviscerated. People are not going to be able to have food. That's going to... Uh, create instability and volatility. There's going to be fallout. And when there's fallout, when there's fallout, governments are going to want to fucking take over and control. And the only way to control a, a group of individuals who are starving is by killing them and forcing them into submission. And then after that submission happens, after that forcible submission happens, uh, people are going to literally leave. They're going to be displaced and they're going to need new places to live in. They're going to go to Europe and, and cooler areas, cooler climates. They're going to go to America. Countries that have a semblance of stability. America with Latin America and Europe with Africa and the Middle East. And the only way to stop that mass migration, instead of uh, accommodating uh, for that mass migration and uh, building housing and doing everything you can to make sure that, like, that, you know, people are taken care of, ensuring that people live in livable fucking cities in sustainable environments in their own home countries is to create bigger walls, better borders, more guns, and, and more detention facilities where we can enslave the immigrant population. That's the future. I mean, not to be super doomer, but uh, super doom pill, but that is the truth. That is what's happening. Accuse me of being a climate change denier, which I'm not. I know that we've got to adjust the way we, we run the world and the way we live in our own societies because climate is changing, but it's not changing for one reason only, the one reason only being how wicked man is to set fire to the planet in all sorts of different ways. And the reason I think Prince Charles has been so effective is because he's a moderate and he's talked gently about it and quietly and slowly, you know. Yeah, that's, by the way, that, that's the funny thing. This guy is literally doing, Mike Perry, is doing exactly what the other chatter was saying. Oh, by calling everyone a dumbass? That's how you're going to tackle climate change? Yeah, dude. Yeah, no. By, by sparing people's feelings, will you uh, be able to defeat uh, climate change? You know, he hasn't gone out onto the streets and started gluing his face to tarmac, and he hasn't been pushing big pink boats through city centres and stopping people going about their everyday life. So more people listen to Prince Charles when he speaks than listen to all these, you know, eccentric people who go around trying to stop the world from moving and causing pollution and all that kind of stuff than listen to Prince Charles. Prince Charles has done a good job, but I do not believe that the climate crisis is only man-made, and I believe that net zero target 2050 is a completely ridiculous target which will ruin all our lives if it's ever achieved. Judging on Ash's face, I think she might have a little bit to... Well, I, I love think that she, face. I think she would, really yeah. Might have a little bit to say in response. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, sometimes when I do this job, I wonder if even participating in the media is the right thing to do because we sometimes we somehow managed to have the stupidest motherfucker said eccentric lunatics like who scientists dude is that who you mean when you say eccentric lunatics unlike you sometimes we somehow managed to have the stupidest possible conversation about the single most serious issue that's facing us as a species 2050 is too late all right, there's a reason why the UN climate reports are saying that we've got 10 years to take mm. meaningful action mm. and action what? Ruin our lives, Green Deal law? They forget they would make bank on taxes on solar and wind farms? If we had taken action in the 1970s, in the 1980s, even in the 1990s, we wouldn't have to make such drastic adjustments to how we live our lives. It's because we've wasted all this time mm. having totally pointless arguments, talking about the methods people use to raise awareness rather than the thing they're trying to draw our attention to, mm. that we've ended up, I think, in such a dire position so you're actually agreeing with the we, we should have family. listened to the scientists who are sounding the alarm the environmental activists who said well look I, if Charles bro this is so funny it's like british media is so inherently reactionary that they can't even like they can't look at anything from the lens of like here are some nameless scientists like faceless scientists that have been ringing the alarm bells not prince charles then why are you trying to fucking turn this into a tabloid gotcha moment like fuck prince charles bro who gives a fuck? Why do you have to suckle on his little boot? Like, okay, yeah, he, he got it right, bro. He got it. Like, oh, man. But the royals, why are you attacking the royals? They had a good one on this one. I mean, slavery and all was not great, but they had a good one here. Like, who gives a shit? Charles was one voice in a chorus. Fine. I've got problems with his use of helicopters, private jets, whatever. But 
this isn't about an individual. This is the fact that we have a media conversation which props up billionaire and oligarch polluters and allows them to get away with boiling our planet to a crisp just Actually, to make a few people made. richer. Is it only man who is, you know, damaging the planet? Is it not meteorological considerations as well? The fact that the Romans were allowed to, were able to... This is what I mean by having the, no. the, the stupidest possible conversation. We yeah. don't have control over sunspots. We have control over how much fossil fuels Yeah, but burn. sunspots happen. And, sun, and sunspots, funny you should mention, I was going to bring them up, affect the climate of the Earth. Again, and, and again. The, and and there was a mini ice age. There was a mini ice age between 1300 and 1600, what right? We... The Romans grew vineyards on Hadrian's Wall. Only it's cyclical. It is cyclical. I mean, you're, you're, what, what you're doing is effectively defecating in the public swimming pool. Dude, it's fucking nuts. It's nuts, dude. I mean, he's going to die soon, so he doesn't give a shit. But I guess, like, does he not have grandchildren? Like, does he not care? You cannot avoid climate disaster. You can avoid it for, like, the next hundred years. Maybe your next of kin will be able to avoid it if you're rich enough. But ultimately, it's over. Like, we have one planet. It's done. It's done. So what's up with these fucking dumbass arguments? Like, oh, well, you know, the Romans, there was a mini ice age. There was a mini ice age. Like, bro, it doesn't matter. You can look away from the disaster. You can look away at the inevitable uh, climate migrant crisis that's coming, right? You can look away when the government decides to kill them or enslave them for the crime of trying to avoid disasters that we have caused by the way because directly the western world the industrialized nations are the primary reason why the third world underdeveloped countries and non-developed exploited countries are getting fucked over with climate change because we're burning uh fossil fuels at a rate that is significantly higher than them the average american in their fucking fridge is entire families worth of electricity just for the year so the notion that this is uh you know their own fault or their own responsibility is also ridiculous of the national conversation and trying okay. to muddy the water. No, not. Oh, no, you are, I'm because this, this is stupid. I'm not, I'm putting this facts totally, forward. They are facts, right? Totally and you factuous totally ignore and them. You won't, yeah. you won't respond yeah. to me talking about uh, olive groves in Northumberland or the Ice Age, 1300 because to 1600. Because that's Why got nothing to do. Hello, right, right before, before one of you starts gluing yourself to something. Mm. Okay, well, I mean... This lady, the, that haircut alone is like automatic L. I'm not, I'm not trusting what's back going to on. Charles, here. which is what we were talking about. Yeah, let's get back to Prince Charles. More important concept to anyone who says just the summer here's the NASA climate spiral. I agree with her. The issue has nothing to do with capitalism, but has everything to do with the distribution of political power. <laughs> I love when people say stuff like that. They're like, this has nothing to do with capitalism, but also the distribution of power uh, uh, being in the hands of those who own capital, uh, who end up uh, building uh, governments to, to you know, go along with their needs and interests and oftentimes put profit over uh, the interests of the people. That has nothing to do with capitalism and everything to do with what? You're just like describing how capitalism operates and then turning around and saying, but it has nothing to do with capitalism. If that makes you feel better, then fine, because you've already addressed the problem. You already recognize the problem. You already addressed it, except all those people then always will say profit incentive can work well with climate initiatives. No, it can't. All matter of climate initiatives is anti-capitalist. Why? Because those with the accumulation of power, those with the accumulation of capital are the fucking oil and gas industry. It is literally profitable currently for green energy initiatives to happen. And yet, for some weird reason, everybody thinks AOC means, uh, or, or Green New Deal means AOC is going to come to your house and fuck you up for eating a hamburger. And that uh, we're going to shoot down planes and instead force people at gunpoint to get on trains. How did that happen? It's not capitalism, but, you know, Shell and BP and Exxon are buying out the remaining fucking green energy companies out there in an effort to literally, one hedge their bets, okay, and two, slow down the transfer to uh, renewable energy as best as possible. How's that happening? Oh, yeah, this is it. From the 1600s to now, the annual average temperature, it spikes a little bit, but ultimately it's at, like, consistently 8 to 9. Hits 10 a little bit a couple times, goes back down. Here, let's, let's speed this up a little bit. Now it's at 10, like... The average of the average annual temperature is now basically stuck permanently at fucking 10 degrees. It was like 8 to 9 in the, 16, uh, in, in the 1600s, and now it's 9 to 10. 1 degrees in over 400 years? Brother, 
One degrees in change over the fucking average temperature is huge, dude. Do you know what one degrees does, dude? Motherfucker just said one degrees change. Oh, whatever, dude. That's not that big of a deal. One degrees for average is insane, chatter. Minus three degrees average decrease gives you a fucking ice age, I believe. <laughs> My man said it's only one degree change, bro. Yeah, nah, whatever, dude. I'll just turn on the AC going back to that original meme, but it's literally this. Chatter looked at one degree temperature change on average and was like, whatever, dude. Like, what? I'll just fucking turn on the AC one degree further. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, brother. Yee, yee. What the fuck do you mean? Who cares? One degree change is like polar caps melting. You, you get it? And all of the other, like, you know, gas is being released as a consequence of that, like, you know, sea levels rising, like all of that shit. Extreme erratic weather conditions becoming permanent and, and commonplace. Major tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis. There's more here. Let's watch more fucking. Oh, oh you see, John, you're outside enjoying yeah. the sunshine. It's not too it's, hot, it's, is it? No, it's, it's absolutely lovely. It's what, 20 degrees out here. It's perfect. But um, on a serious note, folks um by early next week you can scrap 20 degrees it could well be 40 degrees i think there will be hundreds if not thousands of excess deaths early next week the charts that i can see in front of me are frightening so we all like nice weather but this will not be nice weather this will be potentially lethal weather for a couple of days it'll be brief but it'll be brutal oh, so John, you know but... we can we can Oh, yeah. oh, so this is so John. I want us to be happy about the weather and every single. I don't know what. What the fuck? Hey John, you're killing the fucking vibes, yeah? You're killing the vibes. It's nice out. Who cares about Granny dying from heat exhaustion? Yeah, don't talk about it. You're bringing down the fucking mood. What? No shot. This is real. What the fuck? Death toll from heat wave in Portugal and Spain rises to 17. What? Whether something's happened to meteorologists to make you all a little bit fatalistic and, and <laughs> harbingers of doom. Because all of the broadcasts, particularly on, on the BBC, every time I've turned on anyone's talking about the weather, they're saying that there's going to be tons of fatalities. But haven't we always had hot weather, John? I mean, what Wait, is this like British Fox News? What am I watching right now? Is, is this like a joke? Is this like a bit or something? Like, is this British people trying to do Fox News? It's not real, right? Because they're not even doing good. Like, they're not even doing a good job. They're doing demonstrably a bad job of propagandizing the position. It's kind of funny because, like, Fox News does a better job at this because they've had many, many years of training. And also, the, the target market is, like, really fucking stupid across the board. Wasn't the 76, the summer of 76, that was as hot as this, wasn't it? Uh, no. Uh, and, you know, we are seeing more and more records, more and more frequently and more and more severely. Oh, there is literally a video on why the UK's Fox News didn't work by Mooncat. Great. Yeah, GBN is not working because they have like a dude who is a specialist who is actually saying the right things, like the correct things. About In Fox News, they would have had someone be, uh, also just as fucking insane as the host themselves uh, or someone who's better equipped at dunking on the guy and making him look like a silly bitch. Not to say that GBN is good in any capacity. I'm not saying that at all. I don't believe that at all, but certainly that is a, uh, that is the reason. The climate, the climate. Oh, I heard that the other day. Here we are, guys, threatening us. He's worried about the ocean will rise one hundredth of one percent over the next three hundred fucking years. Damn, he said fucking. It's crazy. These people, these people are crazy. And, you know, we want a clean environment. I'm a big environmentalist in the truth. I want immaculately clean water. We want clean air. And we set all sorts of records during my administration. But we can't destroy our country in doing it. You know, China, the air is filthy. Russia is filthy. India is filthy. Japan is filthy. And that filth goes up. And then it blows into our country, and we're supposed to be clean, and we don't have the power with so-called green, the windmills, you know? Remember the windmills? Darling, darling, I want to watch the president. I love him so much. I want to watch him on television tonight. 
I'm sorry, uh, but the wind isn't blowing. You'll have to wait <laughs> till another time. Wind knows. You know. There's no batteries. Like, it just, like, doesn't work. You know, they're all made, the windmills, in Germany and in China. China! And more crap is poured if you believe in the carbon footprint. Remember with Obama? The carbon footprint must be saved. Dude, people have, like, such a weird one-note attitude about renewable energy. It's fucking insane. Like, they literally think, you know, there's, like, levers and pulleys, right? And, like, when there's wind... The fucking windmill turns. And when the windmill turns, that's how through like a crankshaft, your house gets electricity. Like there's no, there's no storage mechanism. There's no like, like how the fuck do they think oil works? How, how do they think oil works? Like how do you think you, you, you power shit with oil and, and gas? How? Yeah, they think energy works like a Rube Goldberg machine. Exactly. They're like, right, who knows? Who knows how it works? Folks, believe me. Energy works. Now that we covered like how the world is on fire, let's see what the Brandon administration was going to do about it. Temperatures putting lives at risk. The White House could reportedly make a big announcement soon. According to the Washington Post, President Biden could declare a climate emergency as soon as this week. The move would come after two stinging defeats for the White House. Citing inflation concerns, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin said he would block President Biden's climate legislation, which includes... Fuck yeah, dude. I mean, come on, 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 come on. You just gotta, you know. Like, the gauntlet. Just think about the gauntlet. Think about the gauntlet. Think about the gauntlet. Think about the gauntlet for a second. NBC News has reached out to the White House. We haven't heard back yet. So, Mike, what options would declaring a national climate emergency give the president when it comes to fighting global warming and climate change? Uh, climate action remains an urgent priority. And as the president put it, if the Senate refuses to act, he will take strong executive action. A White House official just got to get back to me uh, a moment ago, in fact, Joe, saying uh, that, uh, that we are still considering all options and no final decision has been made. But what are those options? Uh, this official is pointing out that the president has already taken a number of executive actions to try to deal with climate change, including the invoking the per, uh, Defense Production Act just last month to try to boost the solar manufacturing industry. According to a report from the Center for Biological Diversity, which is urging the president to take this more urgent action, he could also consider actions uh, like uh, invoking the Defense Production Act again, uh, suspending offshore drilling and halting crude oil exports. They've been considering it, dude of pessimism about these talks that Senator Schumer was engaged in with Senator Manchin. And so they're ready for this moment, but now they're kind of doing the final uh, vetting of these options. Mike, one of the big challenges is last month, the Supreme Court severely restricted the EPA's authority to regulate carbon emissions. So how is the White House trying to work around that ruling and to avoid further court challenges down the road? Yeah, this decision last month was seen by... SCOTUS is going to be like, yeah, it's actually constitutional to kill people that want to take away uh, the profits of the oil and gas industry. And it's unconstitutional to even like uh, declare a climate change emergency because it's not real. It's fucking made. Uh, it's Chinese propaganda. <laughs> but awesome. It's so sick. So good. I love that. Thank you. Of climate activists as a real gut punch. The Obama administration had based so much of its climate policy on using executive authorities, and that was what was struck down by the Supreme Court, specifically the EPA's authority to regulate greenhouse gas emissions uh, under the Clean Air Act. Now, White House officials telling me this morning that they believe that that court ruling was actually rather narrow, that this was one narrow ruling on one specific narrow authority. And they believe that there are still authorities within other pieces of legislation that the president can employ at this point. But when you talk about invoking a climate emergency, I think that's an effort by the White House to give whatever actions the, the president were to take even more legal authority. We see this in potential action on climate. And we've also been talking about this as a possible public health emergency the administration is considering declaring in the wake of the Supreme Court's decision on abortion. That's where the White House is really in. So crazy that like uh, the Supreme Court keeps siding with corporations even when it comes to like neutering the already minimal marginal amount of power that the uh, federal government has in like regulating these corporations uh, and, and hitting their uh, you know their profit margins to I don't know save the fucking planet. It's crazy. It's crazy that that keeps on happening. You know, it's just non-political, by the way. Exactly. The Supreme Court, not political. Of course, there's nothing poli There is nothing political about capitalism. There's nothing political about capitalism. It's just the way things are.
in emergency mode on a number of fronts, Joe. I mean, let's be clear, Mike, any executive order from the president on climate is likely going to end up in court. So Congress is still, you know, ideally for the president, the best way to make a lasting change. But we know Senator Joan Manchin, he's come out against President Biden's climate and tax plan now. So is there any hope at all for more negotiations in the Senate or is it pretty much the president having to go it alone here? You know, Joe, the, the vice president was actually out giving a speech yesterday, uh, speaking to the NAACP, and as it relates to a number of a Biden administration priorities, whether it be voting rights, taking action on abortion, uh, or other policies, she said, we need two more votes in the Senate. The White House, as I indicated, was always skeptical that Senator Manchin was going to come around. You heard the president say this on Friday. He was asked if Senator Manchin had been negotiating in good faith. He says, I wasn't negotiating with Senator Manchin, so I couldn't speak to it. There was a view, even in Democratic leadership, that Senator Schumer was perhaps a little bit too optimistic that Manchin could be brought on board with a robust effort to revive the Build Back Better agenda. And so now what the president is calling on Congress to do, uh, the Senate specifically, is to take the few options that Senator Manchin is willing to go ahead with and try to pass that. But really, any further action on climate specifically is going to depend on the midterm elections this fall. All right, Mike Memoli, thanks for kicking us off this hour. We appreciate it. Here is Sheldon Big Cock White House. Uh, this is like one of the issues. Climate change and dark money are two issues the Sheldon White House is great on. Here, let's hear what he has to say. Involved with, where there's this much dark money and this much influence being used. Here's how the Washington Post summed it up. This is a conservative activist behind the scenes campaign to remake the nation's courts. And it's a $250 million dark money operation. $250 million is a lot of money to spend if you're not getting anything for it. So that raises the question, what are they getting for it? Well, I showed the slide earlier on the Affordable Care Act and on Obergefell and on Roe versus Wade. That's where they lost. But with another judge, that could change. That's where the contest is. That's where the Republican Party platform tells us to look at how they want judges to rule, to reverse Roe, to reverse the Obamacare cases, and to reverse Obergefell and take away gay marriage. That is their stated objective and plan. Why not take them at their word? But there's another piece of it, and that is not what's ahead of us, but what's behind us. What's behind us is now 80 cases, Mr. Chairman, 80 cases under Chief Justice Roberts that have these characteristics. One, they were decided five to four by a bare majority. Two, the five to four majority was partisan in the sense that not one Democrat, Democratic appointee joined the five. I refer to that group as the Roberts Five. It changes a little bit as with Justice Scalia's death, for instance, but there's been a steady Roberts Five that has delivered now 80 of these decisions. And the last characteristic of them is that there is an identifiable Republican donor interest in those cases. And in every single case, that donor interest won. It was an 80 to zero, five to four partisan route, ransacking. One of my favorite things to always talk about is the difference between how Western nations view corruption. It's bribery if you are in, you know, Pakistan, right? Oh man, poo poo. Those countries do bribery. They're 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 barbaric. In America, we have codified bribery. We have made it legal. It's called lobbying. It's just doing business. Of course, big uh, companies are going to do that. Of course, companies are going to engage in actions that. Uh, you know, benefit their shareholders. 